Hello, my dear. I'm Dr. Alam Musbah, professor of obstetrics and gynecology, faculty of medicine, Mansoura University. Today, we have a case scenario discussion about a case with the vaginal discharge. Okay, let us start to read the, this case scenario. 22-year-old woman married six months ago, pregnant 10 weeks, presents with offensive fishy vaginal discharge, which is not profuse, is mild. For one week, this discharge for one week, okay? She's pregnant 10 weeks, she is married for six months. On a speculum examination, small amount of a smooth gray discharge is seen coating vaginal wall. Cervix, sh cervix shows a small ectropion. No other pelvic lesions detected. So this is our case today. Try to find the answer of the following question. What is the most likely diagnosis? The most likely diagnosis is bacterial vaginosis. Why I said bacterial vaginosis? Because this lady is pregnant and the bacterial vaginosis is commonly seen also in pregnancy. The character of the discharge with fishy odor and being mild in amount, smooth, gray discharge, all these characters coming with the bacterial vaginosis. Okay, so what is the differential diagnosis? We have a case with vaginal discharge. As you see, she is pregnant. We can see in a pregnancy normal vaginal discharge, but it is clear and not offensive. So this is not the cause. The pregnancy is not the cause. Maybe think about trichomonas vaginalis because the discharge is offensive. But trichomonal vaginitis is associated with profuse vaginal discharge and the frothy. And it is not fishy. It is offensive, but it is not fishy. Fishy odor is characteristic of bacterial vaginitis. So, I can exclude trichomonas vaginalis because the discharge is mild. Also, it is not yellowish and not frothy. So, it is not trichomonas. It is not candida infection because candida infection is characterized by being whitish associated with severe itching and it is odorless while in this case the discharge is offensive and fishy odor sexually transmitted infection like chlamydia and gonorrhea can be excluded because there is no other sexual partners and no other symptoms or signs suggesting sexually transmitted infection so what about cervical ectropion? Cervical ectropion may be associated with vaginal discharge, but vaginal discharge will be clear and odorless. So, it is not our case today because the discharge is grayish, smooth, with fishy odor, so it is not the criteria of the discharge of the which is 
odorless clear discharge. Okay, this is as regards the differential diagnosis. Let us go to the next step question in this case. What is the further investigation? Where cervical or high vaginal swab for infection is needed to diagnose bacterial vaginosis or candida or sexual transmitted infection. Provisionally, I diagnose the case as a bacterial vaginosis, but I should exclude others like sexual transmitted infection and the cat. But what characteristic for bacterial vaginosis in investigation? More formal criteria for diagnosis are the AMSR. AMSR criteria including smooth gray discharge, clue cells, or microscopy which is characteristic for bacterial vaginosis, the high pH from 6 to 7, and the fishy odor with potassium hydroxide. If you add potassium hydroxide drop to the discharge, fishy odor would be released. So all these criteria suggesting, or I can say confirming the diagnosis, of bacteria vaginosis. Okay? So, this is as regard the question, what is the further investigation? So, what is the treatment? Treatment is very simple. It can be given during the pregnancy. Metronidazole, 500 milligram oral, twice daily for five to seven days. And some general advice could be given for uh, any woman with bacterial vaginosis to avoid occurrence of bacterial vaginosis in the future by avoiding vaginal pushing and antiseptic agents in the path as these interfere with the normal flora lactobacilli. We know, we know that the normal bacterial flora in the vagina is the lactobacilli, which is protected from other infection. Bacterial vaginosis will develop, organisms will develop if lactobacilli becomes deficient. And when the lady do much care for herself, she think about that, that she, if, use, if she use antiseptic regularly in the path, tube or, or during the shower and so on she she is doing cleaning for herself but this is not true you are killing the normal bacteria flora like lactobacilli on the other hand the bacterial vaginosis organism will grow up and cause this infection what's called bacterial vaginosis okay so this general advice is important to be known. This is the end of this case scenario discussion. I was, I think, I was, uh, I, uh, I hope it was helpful for all of you. This is my box published on Amazon. I'll put the link of my site on Amazon in a comment. This is my site on YouTube, where you can find other case scenario discussion, more lectures in OB guide, and quizzes ask a station, guidelines, and so on. Okay, thank you everybody, wishing you all the best.